Hey guys, how we doing out there? Well, I've been shooting one video after another tonight. We started off uh, introducing a product that I just put into the shed. I'm redoing the shed and getting a different setup going on. And we did a couple product reviews. One of them was a, a tool for the shed. And the other one was a product that's going to go on the guitar we're going to be talking about um hey i want to tell you about bob log the third if you don't know bob log the third then i don't know what to do i'll pray for you um, and bob log given some of his material anyway i literally hunted down bob log the third after i heard a song on a fat possum record compilation called all the rockets go bang. That's the first Bob Log song I ever heard. So I put together, after doing a great deal of CIA and FBI level research on the dude, I put together a cigar box guitar that he played while he was touring, I think 2015, 2016. I built two of them. Bob has one. I have the other. He signed it. Um, this is one of my classic what I'm known for Camacho box heavy duty uh, use it as a sledgehammer dig flowers in for your mom I've actually had a conversation with Bob Logs mom about plants yes anyway no no details you don't need to know I'm a horticulturist and an arborist by trade anyway so I built Bob a guitar, and then, of course, Tammy signed it. Wasn't that cool? Tammy loves Bob. You will find that out. If you Google Bob Log the Third and write Tammy, you will discover Tammy loves Bob. So then I decided as I got into arch tops, I was going to fix up an old silver tone or K or something for Bob because that's what he usually runs. And then I thought, you know what? Those guitars are beat up. They get smashed and everything. So I got a kit... And I built this guitar out of a kit. It doesn't look like a kit. It looks like a single cutaway. Uh, KN1 is kind of what it looks like. But anyway, um, I did an episode and showed you start to finish on this kit, how it ended up looking like this. And I'll give you a link right up there, Bob, the junk pile arch top. So... Got it to Bob. Bob flew into L.A., met him at the airport. He played a little bit, took it out on tour, and guess what? There's a piezo in here. It feeds back terribly, and this pickup here is from a 1965 Silvertone. Kind of period correct for what he uses, but moral of the story, pickup lacks sustain. Piezo is feeding back terribly. This episode... Did I tell you we're going to call it Band-Aid on Bob? We're going to put this thing on the bench, and I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do. Now, when it comes time to figure out what to do with the pickup, we're going to move the pickup, but we're going to pull off the old 65 Silvertone, and we're going to go with a Curtis Novak gold foil pickup. I did an episode about this pickup and opening it and made a few comments about uh, Curtis Novak and the treatment I got and the quality of the product and that is up there. Click on it if you want to. Also, I kind of alluded to a little bit earlier that we were going to use a new tool in the shed and that is a Stumac vice on pedestal with all kinds of tricky gadgets. I did a review of that click up there to see that. Now, I'll quit talking. We will throw this guitar on the bench because I have a few days before I have to take it and hit Palm Springs. It's going to be so hot, but I want this guitar on the roll with Bob forever, so let's get it right. Let's hit the new bench. All right, one more time. There's a piezo in this thing, and there's a coil here. There are two pickups for input jacks, here, one for the piezo and one for the coil. 
volume control for each. So, what needs to happen here is I have to heat up. I used hide glue because hide glue, you can remove it in, in case you need to move something. I went through great effort to mount the piezo in a spot over here. So, I am going to heat up some pallet knives and get that ready to go. I'm going to pull all of this off. I'm going to pull this pickup out. There is a hole in the body up here that came stock with the kit. Once I take this off, I'm going to put the new Curtis Novak pickup down in this area right here. I'm going to kind of test things because the piezo is going to be very near this on this side. So we don't want those conflicting with each other. Plus, I may need to put a bezel or two underneath this to get it closer to the string so it gives it all kinds of good sound. Now, as I take this off, we're going to have a few holes here. This plate will no longer be good, and I don't want the white one sticking out like a sore thumb by itself, so I think I'll use this 1953 Wheaties plate to cover up that hole, and then we'll use this one down here when we put this one on. Now, nice thing about this guitar stand is I just wrote, rotate everything out of the way. I've got my hide glue heater right there. Can you see it? No. I just turn it on and puts a little bit of water in there. I've got a suction cup and a flux brush. Uh, and I also have, let me pull this down a little bit. Yeah, I have a hot plate because I'm going to use my palette knives like so. Once that is hot, heats up, I will put those there and use this iron to hold them down till these get nice and hot. Now, of course, this isn't on. If it were, I would use this like they did in 1902, put that over there, and once I get everything heated up, I can just pull this back around and go to work with my palette knives in here where that piezo is, work it loose. I'm going to pull this off so I have access to everything and move everything around. I'll be Okay, now I want to tell you, while I'm taking the strings off, everything loosens up. This bridge just floats here. I want you to notice that I put with a silver pen a dot where the bridge lines up because the intonation is right on this thing. So I'm going to take a couple pieces of tape. This is a, this is a pretty new guitar, even though the finish doesn't look like it. But... I'm going to make sure that I know where that pickup or that bridge is going to sit when I put it back on, even though I have dots. So there we go. We're good. Let me pull the strings off of this thing. Okay, now this is really handy. This, this uh, vice stand has little tool trays in it here. I think you can... You see those? So I just throw a magnet in there, and when I start putting my screws that I'm pulling out, I just throw them in there, and everything's fine because, of course, these are chick flick heel screws. Now I want you to notice that when I pull up this pick guard, there are little rubber grommets that I put everywhere so there would be an angle up where it didn't push down. So these are thicker than these here, but I wanted this to ride up a little bit so this thing was had a little bit of cushion and wouldn't start cracking the top. 
Now you might have heard it or seen it, but there was a screw that fell in here and I just can't have that. So we're going to be fishing with a magnet here for a second. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. I've shrink wrapped everything and I always like to do that. So I just got to pull some of the shrink wrap off and find where I made the connections. Now I use pushback wire, you can see that. So there's the ground and I always use smaller shrink wrap inside like so, so we never have any shorts. So there goes The old silver tone. Perfect. Now, I just need to use the old license plate here. Lay it on top of this one because they're the same size. And then I will line up the holes that will cause this one to cover up that hole right there. And it will look awesome against this. I think it will look a lot better than this. Of course we'll use, when we figure out where we're mounting, this one we will put this one below it here. Perfect. Now let's figure out how we're going to move the piezo from this general area to over in this general area here. We'll do that before we wire up the new pickup. Okay guys, if you look here, we have grandma's iron, we have the hot plate lit up. This iron is just to hold these here anywhere we want, trust me on that. Alright, to kind of give you an idea of how hot this is, we're going to play the grandma spit game. You know, spit in your hand, rub it on your head. Yeah, that's hot. It worked on your hair in church, so it's going to work here. So, we've got a couple of different ones. I'm going to come in off the edge and oh it's loose already there we go okay now we're going to turn that off and let everything cool down and look at this very expensive coat hanger gadget we're going to sit down in here and grab a hold of All right, I'll be able to get this out of here. Yeah, so we glued everything down, put the glue on this side, and now we're going to pull it through to the other side and focus on this area right here so it was here we're gonna put it up there yeah I'll tell you what hide glue a hide glue heater a flux brush and a set of these pallet knives and iron and a hot plate and it makes short work of working with hide glue heating it up moving things around it's easy money if I'd have used 
tight bond or something like that, I would have had a problem right now. Okay, I almost forgot to tell you, I have one of these cord reels hanging off the ceiling. You can hear it clicking. And I just stop it, and I've got a three-way plug at the end, so I can plug in any number of scrapparatus right here. And that was my hide glue heater, which is right there. You see that? Got a little bit of water in it. I don't need to overflow it and everything, but just a little bit there because once I'm done, I'm going to crack the lid while the jar is still cool. But I've got a little bit of water there, and I've got some paper towels ready. So when it comes time to clean up the brush, hot water works where cold water doesn't. So we're going to let that heat up, and we're going to fish the piezo through to the other side from here over to here and then we're going to do some measuring on where the pickup needs to be because remember we needed to bring it down this way a bit so we're going to measure off the end of the fingerboard and get it straight here and then line it up in the middle and that will tell us where we're going to put our piezo. The last thing we want to do is put the piezo on and then drill through it while we're mounting this fancy Curtis Novak pickup. Now I keep saying this over and over. I can put something down here to make sure nothing slips around. But the fact that I can just rotate this anywhere I want, like this, so I can come in here and fish that through that is a really really cool thing almost as cool as me getting that piezo out of there that quickly there we go and I'm just going to turn it over notice that I have a clip I don't think you can see it notice that I have a clip holding the wires up to the volume control for the pickup, the piezo is back here. Okay, if you take your mirror and look at me, I'm so pretty, look at that, yeah. Anyway, take your mirror, you put it inside the body, and you see that there is a block right here that runs all the way down to the bottom. So, putting the piezo, which is a big piezo, right here, going to be way too close to the pickup, which we're going to measure uh, it needs to be about halfway between the bridge and the end of the uh, fretboard. So we're going to glue it right along here, which is going to put it fairly close, but outside of where that block is. So I've got the glue heating up here, and when it runs and the viscosity of it gets real thin, we're going to put that on here. You don't get frustrated because this thing will slip off and do its thing. I've got a couple clamps that once I can get it close in here, I can put these clamps on like so. You want a couple little small clamps like this in your arsenal. Okay, quick recap. We have a heater here that's heating up our hide glue. This giant monstrous piezo was up here on the bay side giving us too much feedback. We're moving it to the travel side. There's a big block inside of here underneath the bridge. It supports everything. It goes all the way to the floor of the arch top inside. So we're going to put hide glue on here, and we're going to put that right there. Now, how do you get it in here? Well, I had this expensive tool. You'll remember that I fished the wire out with simply by hooking it. I took the same expensive material, made a loop, put a bend in it, put a piece of this high dollar tape on it. Then I'm going to put this on here like so. Do you see that? Push the tape down and I can take this once I've applied the hide glue here and pull that into place right there like so. Then I'll use these little clamps 
and make sure that everything glues up real nice and this is hiding in here so you'll never know. All right, here we go. Rag at the edge, check. Hot water on a paper towel, check. Small clamps, check. Hide glue, very viscous and thin. We don't have to worry about getting globs of it on here. And we're going to want to paint in. Wouldn't it be a shame to get some of this glue on this high dollar finish that we got here that was made out of oak galls, if I remember right? Now, you don't want to put this on here because the spread it thin, you will win, spread it thick rule applies. We're going to let it sit for just a minute. All right, here we go. Make sure it's not hitting anything. Easy money. All right, the clamps are in place, and our little high dollar scrapparatus lives to see another day. Now we just wait for glue to dry. Okay, while we are waiting for glue to dry, I have taken the liberty of getting ahead and taking this micro magic marker and laying out the side of the fingerboard and putting mark on this piece of tape here and doing the same thing here that tells me the edge of the fingerboard from edge to edge and then I've marked off the center then I've taken the pickup and done and did the same thing and I've marked where that front edge of the pickup needs to be right there. So all I have to do is line that up like so and put the center where it needs to be. And that is where I will mark the pickup. Now I've got some holes to drill and some things to put underneath here to dress this all up and make it all pretty. And I also have to build some shims that will raise this up because it needs to be a secret number of millimeters from the bottom of the strings to the top of the pickup because if it's too far away it sounds terrible if they're too close the way Bob's strings are they'll hit it and make all kinds of sparks and weird stuff all right here we go Center of the pickup, front line is in place, pickup is marked off, everything's good. Doesn't matter if that bridge moved because we have it marked off everywhere. And now we will just go through these holes and drill starter holes like so. Let's check it out. There we go. Now we just got to make a couple of shims that we can stand down the road with Bob. that he can simply raise a screw, raise a screw, pull a shim out. That means that what we're gonna to have to do is we're going to have to cut a groove here and here. Can you see that? And also round the edge of the shim off 
So when we slide these in, you don't have to take everything off. They just slip around the screws and we call it a day. Okay, I think we're going to be using enough of these pickups here. But maybe we should make a template. So I'm just going to go around on this piece of Patron box that got sacrificed like so and then I'm going to take that same pilot bit that I used and I'm going to center this up so it doesn't move like so and like so you see that Now I'm going to cut this out on a bandsaw. I'm going to make several of them and transfer this onto shim material. And again, because I'm going to want to be able to slip these in and out, I'm going to want to know where that edge needs to be rounded off for that wire, see? And since the wire is going to be on the back, I'm going to want to slip these in from the front. That's going to be a lot easier coming from this side than trying to squeeze them in between the bridge. So, I am going to groove these out. So when we loosen up the screws, pick those up, they will slide right in just like this and I'll do some detail work on the side so you can't see that it's black and I'll get within the right number of millimeters between this and the strings like so. Okay so this is what it looks like. The wire fits right there. You see that? We can see the holes that the screws go through. So if this is sitting on top of the guitar we're gonna have to put a hole through the top to get over to our potentiometer, but all we got to do is raise those screws up a little bit, make sure that this is on the wire side. We just simply raise this up and skirt the screws, and we've gained a couple of millimeters. Also, the top of this guitar is arched a little bit, so it's not going to hurt us to glue on some of the shim material. It's a little bit flexible. This is cherry wood. If I glue a little bit of that on to our shim and let it float a little bit, that's going to help us because if I mash this down, it's going to cause this to bend, and I don't want that. So we are just kind of still waiting for the hide glue to dry. You want to remember that if the hide glue heater is... Uh, still hot when it's turned off that's probably an indicator that this isn't anywhere near ready in fact I think overnight's going to be good for that all right it is the next day let's pull the clamps off and make sure that our piezo is in place yep not going anywhere and we'll put our clamps up here isn't it nice to have something where you can just arrange everything right within fingertips instead of trash and everything and wonder where it's at for the next project because we can never seem to be doing the same thing twice when we're building a guitar now i want to show you that i have mounted the pickup you saw a sound test it yeah it has chick flick teal screws on it and so now we're going to do some soldering i want to point out a couple of things i have a soldering stand that has a sponge on it you see that you put a little water in there and it keeps the tip of the soldering iron right and then I also have a couple of alligator clips that I can use as heat shrinks or heat sinks excuse me if you're if you're going to be soldering on capacitors for tones and things like that these come in really handy so you don't burn up the capacitor or it's just handy to have them clip things in place. The last thing I'm going to show you before we just get to work, you don't need the narrative to watch me solder, but I have this box of shrink wrap uh, cut down to size and what I'm going to do is I've got red for hot, black for ground. I'm going to solder the ends of the appropriate wires to the wires that have 
come off of this volume pot for this coil. And then once those are soldered individually, then I'm going to take a big piece and slide it over the whole thing so nothing ever comes undone here. So while we're doing this, we're going to have to slip the pieces of shrink wrap on to the appropriate wires before we solder everything. And of course, we're not going to get let everything get too close to where we set off our shrink wrap before it's time. So that said, we will get those on there like that. Can you see that? And then I will slip the big wire that's going to cover everything once it's connected onto the wiring of the pickup and get it way out of the way. Now it's just time to do some soldering. The last thing before I forget, let's grab the pointer. There is There are three wires coming out of this. It's very simple. There's a white wire that's hot. There is a bare wire that's with the shielding material and there's a black wire. Now, since this pot only has a volume control and acts as a volume control, what we're going to do is we're going to take the black wire and wrap it up with the bare wire and both of those will serve as a ground and the white one will be hot and we'll hook those up accordingly. Okay, the last thing we want to do before we slip this final shrink wrap over the top of everything is plug this into an amp. And make sure everything works. Perfect. Okay, now we will take our little tie backs and we will coil this wire up and we will secure it with one and tie back to another part of the harness inside. So as to protect the aesthetic integrity of Bob, the junk pile guitar, once this is in here, we will put all the junk pile scrap apparatus back in place, put the strings on it, and it's party time, brother. And then finally, the bridge. You will notice that there is a silver dot right there. And as we pull this tape back, you will see that there is a silver dot right there. Silver dot here, silver dot here. Line up the silver dots and the intonation will be awesome. All right, with those dots in place for the intonation, we're going to tape this down. And then I'm going to get the strings out and I'm going to put the six strings that go on here and they are <laughs> did you really think that I was going to tell you that would be like putting my finger on a hot soldering iron
the band-aid on Bob. Yeah, you see my shirt? Big Daddy Bobby. BigDaddyBobby.com. Do you know Big Daddy Bobby? You should. You really should. It's going to fill in some holes for you on some knowledge that you didn't have and probably wish you wouldn't of once you have it. Anyway, this guitar is going to see Bob July 15th in Palm Springs, California. It's going to be 114, 116. It will be like winter there if you are from Tucson, Arizona. Uh, and so we're going to find Bob there. Tammy will get to see Bob, which turns her into a human tornado. She freaks out. Anyway, that will be a good thing. If you are anywhere near Palm Springs, California, on July 15th, 2022, you should be at the Alibi. If you see it after this, then you should get a time machine because you will have missed something awesome. Oh yeah, before I forget, have you ever seen one of these? You're like, I don't know, dude. It's, I can't see what's in there. Well, get ready to covet life because what could this be? Yeah, it's a Mondo Guano poster. What is that? Yeah, it goes right in the Big Daddy Bobby vault of who knows what. Anyway, I'm glad you got to experience this with me. We learned a lot about putting things and moving things around, and I hope... It doesn't scare you to build a guitar because this was a kit and um, yeah, if I can do it, you can do it. So, if you haven't given me a like, dude, I don't know what to tell you. You're just really hard to get along with. Subscribe if you haven't and you know I'm going to get footage of Bob playing this. And I will see you soon. Hey, Stackmaster Big Bobby, thanks dude.